Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So today we are on to the second video in the series on deconstructing internalized capitalism and what I want to talk to you about today is the class system and propaganda. Uh, these two things go hand in hand and I think it's worth definitely getting into. I'll have some resources linked below and in the blog post that goes up with this video about that. Um, but I do want to say off the top this might be kind of hectic, like these are pretty intense things to cover. I'm really giving like the bare basics of like my thoughts and the things that I've been reading about this subject. So this is definitely not in any way to be like super in depth. The video would be like three hours long and I don't have time to make a podcast. So here we are. I do have a new setup that I'm working with today. I got a new phone, which is also where I film all my videos because I smashed my old phone in the driveway, which is why there was no video. Before, I try and post one every two weeks. I mean, ideally I'd like to get one up every week, but I only have like so much time available to do this because I do work full time. So that is what I'm working with in terms of time frame. So I'm excited to see how these videos turn out with the new phone. It is the Google 6 Pro, in case anyone is wondering. And for my very close to my heart sustainability, I was able to find one secondhand, which was super exciting. So always check with your phone provider if you can get secondhand tech and keep you know, excess mining to a minimum. Which is also another topic that I'm gonna cover, not in the next video, maybe the one after, but like the whole concept of degrowth. Um, but that's a very, de very intense subject that uh, I'm gonna have to get into. And one thing I do wanna acknowledge like right off the top when talking about the class system, like there's a lot of stuff that intersects with that. And I'm aware of that, but I am not the person that should be speaking on those subjects um, in the different ways that like race and culture and things like that intersect with the class system. Um, that is a large topic that I'm not going to be able to talk about appropriately. And so I am aware of that, but that's not something that I'm going to be touching on in this. I'm going to be talking about sort of like the cultural implications of the class system itself. Um, the way that it's used to reinforce certain values and also want to get into a book that I read that was super interesting um, about sort of the fetishization of the working class which I think is an interesting concept and then also just I want to talk about propaganda in general. So the first thing that I want to talk about when we're talking about the class system as propaganda is the way that we have normalized certain aspects of classes to be what is attainable, what is normal, and I touched on this a bit in my previous video, um, but what we have through the news, through movies, books, television, is the normalization of this upper middle class lifestyle that everyone should have, that it is attainable for everyone, that it is what is normal, what is expected, and realistically it's just not. <laughs> the flip side of that being that we have demonized poverty to be poor is a moral failing. You are simply not trying enough. And that's sort of the messaging that comes out. Oh, well, you, you know, they, they're just lazy, whatever it is. And it's also used as a tool of fear because if you're poor, then you will literally be left in the streets to starve. <laughs> if you are not able to contribute to society, in a, as in producing capital for someone else, producing some sort of value with your time, then you are not worthy of the social safety net. So this fear, this fear of poverty is represented through the way that uh, working class and poor people are represented in movies, in television, in books. They're usually scary in some way or they're un, like they're dirty or they live as frightening. You know, they tend to have what people would deem as like lower class accents, live in lower class areas, dress in a certain way. There's a cultural representation of poverty even in mainstream media that that weaponizes it. It creates fear. Well, it can't be like that because they're not the way we're supposed so to definitely be do want to acknowledge that like the title of this video is very clickbaity and uh, like obviously I want people to click on it so I'm gonna try and lure them in but let's talk about propaganda what do I mean by propaganda why do we need to be able to recognize it and why do I think this is important um, propaganda you know is itself sort of like a fairly neutral term depending on your meaning of it propaganda is information of a biased or you know self-serving nature um, to promote or publicize a certain point of view. Um, you know, I always remember learning about like World War II propaganda, you know, like dig for victory, all that kind of stuff. That is propaganda itself. It's not always like a bad thing, 
but I think that we need to be able to recognize like how it's being used, especially to like reinforce capitalist ideas in our lives. For example, like how many end of high school coming of age movies are there out there about getting into college, about getting that good job, about all of that stuff. And subtly these, are, these values are reinforced. If you're not, you know, coming out of high school, going directly into university, getting out there, getting a job, doing all of these things, then oh, well you're lazy because you're unmotivated and that's why you're poor without, you know, understanding that the system is not in place for the majority of people to get ahead. So you have everyone striving towards these sort of middle class values, these middle class um, measures of wealth, because those things, if they are enforced, and we can teach people to understand that that is how you are seen as valuable, then we're out there consuming more things. You're buying more expensive vehicles, you're purchasing larger homes, if you're able to purchase a home at all. Um, you know, I, as I'm getting into my 30s, there's such a great deal of pressure. Like so many people are like, oh, well, aren't you in the housing market? Aren't you gonna buy a condo? Aren't you gonna do this? And it's just, it's very overwhelming. And I, you know, from personal experience, you can sort of definitely feel like the way you're living is inadequate, even though to me, like spending half a million dollars on a shitty condo is a crazy thing to do. I mean, to each their own, but like, why are you doing it? Is it because like, that's what you're supposed to do? We've talked about this. Don't do the stuff you're supposed to do. And the thing too is that most people don't realize is that most people, unless you are extremely wealthy, and even if you're making six figures a year in you know our North American lifestyles, that's not a lot of money. And you are far closer to being homeless than you are to any millionaires or billionaires. You just don't realize it. They don't want you to realize that. And that's really why to me it, it does seem like propaganda. You have these reinforcements culturally through the media that we consume, through what is normalized, um, to make sure that we are all funneled into a system where we are participating in a way that is the most convenient for the ruling class, whatever you want to refer to it, the ultra wealthy, whatever it is. And this hierarchy that is created is used both to organize people, um, to quiet the voices that they don't want heard, and to make sure that we are all doing what we're supposed to be doing and doing the things that we're told to do. And I think one way that you can definitely see that it, you know, on the flip side of those movies of like the real normalized upper middle class lifestyle, you don't have an accurate cult cultural representation of the working class. You don't have these stories being told in mainstream movies on you know syndicated cable television they're just they're just not there and you know you have a very bland mild palette of things that we're able to go and read about things that are acceptable uh, to have on the news and I think it's very unfortunate you know it's right down to ad placements in movies to the bombardment of advertisement that we get throughout our days the one, you need to be motivated enough to want to better yourself to do all those things, and those that that is important. But also on the flip side, you're then being told constantly, day after day, that you are inadequate, and what you have is inadequate, and so you need to keep striving for more and better things because then you will be more valuable. And it it works in a way that people are pitted against each other, you know, the, the argument over the $15 an hour minimum wage, which is a whole other thing, but you have people sniping, well, why do they get $15 an hour? I do a more important job and I only get $17 an hour. Well, be mad that some guy made $4 billion this year, well, you made $17 an hour. Like, the person that also wants a living wage is not your enemy. We don't realize that we could be more effective if, like, we're working together to help everyone, to raise everyone up. Uh, to, to a better standard of living is going to be, you know, more important. And that's something that I found really interesting in the book that I said I wanted to talk about. It's called Steal As Much As You Can. And she goes over sort of like the class system. But a really interesting point that she makes is that with this motivation towards having everyone go and get a college degree and do all this stuff, you actually have a large portion of working class and impoverished people that are now receiving a higher education. And previously, where they wouldn't have been able to speak about how to dismantle the systems that oppress them, uh, now people do have the tools to do that. They have 
the background. They've been exposed to different types of theories, different books that they wouldn't have been exposed to previously. And I think that that's a really interesting thing that you definitely see with, you know, especially Gen Z, you have these people coming out sort of at a very young age, understanding that the system isn't there to help most. I know the video has been kind of like scattered and a bit hectic. Honestly, like the thing is, is without getting into like super nitty gritty details and making this again, like a three hour long video, it's hard to build on this subject. And the thing is, is these videos are going to build together in sort of like a larger idea. And while individually they're great to watch, there's some points that I think that, you know, I've been reading that are totally worth further discussing. I understand that like, I am not a professor and this is just a YouTube rant, so please bear with me. I'm working through this as I'm going. I'm reading, you know, every week new, new essays, new articles, new things like that. And I do, as the video where I'm talking about propaganda, I think it's, it's important to acknowledge my sources. I do try and read different perspectives from both the left, the right, from whatever, because I think that that's how you get a whole, an appropriate outlook. I mean, there was a recent, you know, hubbub on the internet about this guy who's organized, like a union organizer, and he talks about a lot of like pretty far left-wing ideas, and he went on to Fox News to talk about unions and why unions are important. Well, now he's being vilified by left, by leftist supporters because he went on Fox News. Well, you can't do that. You can't go on Fox News. But how else are these people going to get exposed to these ideas if you don't have people reaching across the aisle, as it were, they like to say politically? Um, you know, you're not gonna grow movements or have people support things like unions or things like universal health care if you don't reach out to the people that don't hear about it and speak to them about it. And so in terms of fighting propaganda, like once you're able to recognize it, is that it's on both sides. The left and the right use propaganda. A lot of things are sensationalized. They want you to have an emotional reaction to it. That's what it's designed to do. And I would love for you to be able to recognize it, to not have such an emotional reaction and to be able to sift through a variety of sources from a variety of viewpoints and understand that the truth is really going to be somewhere in the middle. Anyways, guys, that's what I have for you this week. I'm sorry that this was like, vaguely hectic. Um, I will have those links down below. There is a blog post that is slightly more coherent um, about this topic that focuses mainly on how the class system is used as propaganda, but I think that I'm definitely going to have another video on this subject just because it's really hard to get into nitty-gritty details <laughs> and have this still be like watchable. So let me know down below what are your thoughts on propaganda? Do you think that it is prevalent? Do you think it's used selectively? Do you think it's used at all? Now, as always, thanks for watching this one. Um, I will catch you in the next one and be sure to check me out on my blog and on Instagram.